uh, the last part of my presentation was about <laughs> choices, where we were saying now life is full of choices. And uh, we said you are where you are today because of the decisions that you made, because of the choices that you made. Because when man was created in the Garden of Eden, uh, God said, uh, rule over, subdue the earth, have dominion over everything that creeps upon the earth. Hallelujah. So we, we, we were given this uh, access. We were given this willpower. God gave us the right to choose. Hallelujah. Yes, of course, the Holy Spirit is there to, to direct us. The Holy Spirit is there to lead us. But the Holy Spirit doesn't do it like we do in the physical. Or maybe what normally happens when you are in an army, when the general is coming and everyone is, you know, you, you are being told what to do. And even if you are tired, uh, it's unfortunate. You are, maybe you may fall because of the pressure. But when the Holy Spirit is operating with you, he don't do such it, it don't inject things in you in a strong manner. Mm -hmm. he, he does it gently and he doesn't force. If he feels you are not interested, gently he departs with no pressure. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we are saying as children of God, we are supposed to be led by the Spirit of God. Remember in the book of uh, Exodus, they were led by a pillar of cloud. They were led by a, a cloud of fire. Hallelujah. That represented the presence of the Lord. So as children of God, we, we really need the Holy Spirit with us in everything that we are teaching here. Guys, if you are not saved, then all these things, are, this is Greek. Th these things will not work. I understand. Maybe you are there. You haven't said yes to Jesus. This can be possible. I'm not here to embarrass you, but I'm here to help you. If you can't remember the day you were saved, then you really need to rededicate your life unto the Lord. You should be in a position to remember the day you received Jesus Christ. But if you are like some of you who were born and bred in church, and you never reached a moment where you could feel, I, I never received Jesus Christ. Today you should receive him as your personal savior. Because this lifestyle that we are talking of, this speaking in tongues thing, you, 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 nothing can drive you because the Holy Spirit is not within you. So you need to be saved. You need to say yes to Jesus Christ. You need to take a decision to receive him as a personal savior. Salvation is an event and salvation is a process. When you receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior, then you start the Christianity walk. As you start the Christianity walk, you are supposed to abide by the laws, by the principles, but we are being guided. The word of God is our standard. What does the word of God say? What does the word of God say? But if you do not read the Bible, if you do not even have the Bible, it will not be possible for you to live such a lifestyle. Hallelujah. If you have never come across those scriptures that talks of speaking in tongues, that talks of interpretation of tongues, that talks of the gifts of the spirit, when we start to explain those things, you really need to be like that church at Berea. Who used to go back home and try to open these words without the speed of the preacher? Then try to see what was she saying. Was it true? Was it correct? You need to meditate upon the word of God. But you, you need to make a decision to, to, to make sure you read the word of God almost every day. Develop a system. You can't spend a day without a phone. You can't spend a day without opening your Facebook page, WhatsApp, Twitter, your email. You know... You can't do without, is that so? Same applies to the word of God. 
because it's the daily bread. You can't live without the word of God. It's not an old system that once expired. This is Rema word. We live by the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes, for the word says in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. He was God from the beginning. Nothing was made that was made. In him was life. So we are saying the word of God is life. The word of God is the living water. We need the word of God to mature. We need the word of God to get direction. The word of God gives us understanding. The word of God gives us wisdom. Hallelujah. I, I really wanted to make an emphasis upon the power that is in the word of God. If you don't love to read the word of God, it will not be possible for you to mature. You are like a child who doesn't want to drink milk. You are like a child who doesn't want to eat food. You are like a child you will suffer kwashioka. You will suffer all sorts of diseases. And at the end, we will lose you. You need to purposely decide willingly. We don't force it, church. No, that's the difference. In the world, they will force you. Maybe they won't promote you because you are not abiding by the laws at work. They won't promote you. You remain where you are. But at church, you can be stagnant for life. The word will be preached the day in, day out. It says people are not forced. It takes your willpower. It takes your willingness. Do you like it? Do you love it? Hallelujah. Yeah. I, I, I saw a certain statement. Bees around the area something. So don't worry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So we are saying, if we read the book of of Chronicles, uh, I didn't write the scripture, the, the, the verse here, that talks about the story of Jabez. First or second Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9. It, it, it says it's first or second. I didn't, huh? First, thank you so much. First Chronicles. The story of Jabez. Jabez said, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. And enable me. He made this prayer. The Bible says why he was called Jabez is because her mother had given birth to Jabez in pain. So his life was like stagnant. But Jabez came to a point of realizing that I am not going anywhere. So he made this prayer, bless me indeed, because he had an understanding that I serve a God who blesses. Enlarge my territory. He had an understanding that this is not it all in my life. I think God can expand me from where I am. This is not it all in my life. So he had to declare, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. And enable me. Remember, we are talking of a quest for maturity amidst of storm. Jabez was born in pain. Jabez was born in sorrow. But he came to a point of realizing this life is abnormal. Hallelujah. So he made this prayer and God <laughs> granted him the desires of his heart. Hallelujah. So today I have come to encourage you. I have come with this message. Who told you you can't make it? Who told you you are a failure? Who told you it's rather too late? Who told you this cannot match you? Who told you this lifestyle is for those people? You know, in Shona, people will say, mm, Marine Europa, akuna <laughs> You are the right candidate for prosperity. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Allow the Holy Spirit to drive you. Have that quest. Have that desire, have that hunger for change. But change will start in your mindset. Purpose to change so that you have better results. Okay, let's go back to our notes. How do you grow? How do you mature? How do you excel? How do you become fruitful? 
amidst of storms. We are saying a quest for maturity. That's our theme. But then, how do I grow amidst of storms? How do I mature surrounded by challenges? How do I bear fruit in such conditions that are unfavorable? How do I excel? I've got quite a number of scriptures here so that we are able to understand. The first scripture is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. We have already read this. Let no man despise the youth. Don't allow anybody to look down upon your life. Don't live according to what they say, but live according to what the Bible says you are. Live according to the word of God. You are what the word says you are. You are not what your mother says you are because some of our parents are not saved. You are not what your father says you are. You are not what your grandmother is saying. You are not what your aunt is saying. But you are what the word of God is saying. But you might not be aware what God is saying if you do not read the word. Because the Bible says my people are perishing, not because of sickness, not because of disease, but because of lack of knowledge. You will only come to a point of realizing that I am the head, I am not the poor. Fearfully and wonderfully I was made. I am not cheap, I am not ordinary, but I am a wonder. Creation is waiting for the wonder that is within me to, uh, to, to explode. But you will realize it when you read the word of God. But if you are not reading the word of God. The devil can present his word. The devil can give you information on your behalf. The devil can convince you you can't make it. The devil can convince you you are too slow. The devil can convince you you are a failure. People who end up even losing their lives, committing suicide because of entertaining negative thoughts. Negative thoughts are not from God. Negative thoughts are from the devil. Whatsoever things are true, what's, uh, is that true that you are a failure? No. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are right, whatsoever things are praiseworthy, if there be any virtue, then separate time and meditate. <laughs> Don't meditate on fake things. Don't meditate on lies. Who told you that way? Why? Hallelujah. Yes, you don't live according to what people say you are. Even if you failed to make it at school, but because you are saved, you have this Jesus. You have this Jesus within you. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Your gift can push. Your gift can shift you. You can rise to a better level without education. I'm not saying don't go to school. Hear me very well. You might be here. You have failed at school. And you think education, academic education, is the only gateway to success. It's the lie of the devil. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's open the word of God. Believe you can do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't give up. Be an example. Okay, before we open the word of God in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, allow me to say this. Pray, read the word of God. Fast, give, build a closer relationship with God. You know, some of the things that I was telling of, that I was speaking, some of my testimonies in life when I was still a youth. You know why they seem not to be existing these days? People are lazy to read the word. People are even lazy to serve in church. People, they don't give. Youths, they don't love to tithe. People, they love sleeping. They don't love coming to all night prayer meetings. You know, we should organize one of the prayer meetings to say this is a Holy Ghost fire all night prayer. Everyone who is not speaking in tongues, tonight you are going to speak in tongues, not because we are going to lay hands on you. You are going to agonize in prayer because Paul says many ought to desire that desire should be kindled in you, that before sun rises, you are going to seek it. Yeah. Yeah. Let it be a desire. Uh -huh. Men ought to desire. Yeah. But if you don't desire, remember it's a willpower. Yeah. You choose. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. So we are talking of those things that will make you mature, that will make you qualify. 
that you make you excel in life amidst of storms. I remember this very well. When Archbishop launched the 2020 then 2023 vision, he said the year of the end of the Lord. But the storms are coming. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Yeah. Only the righteous will grow. Only the righteous will bear fruit. Only the righteous will mature. Right. But those who are living a life that is full of sin, we are sorry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. So you need to be someone who prays. First Thessalonians 5 verse 22 records. First Thessalonians, be an example in speech. In, okay, abstain from every form of evil. Men ought to pray always. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. When did you last pray? When? Don't give me an answer. But the Bible says, men ought to pray always. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So how do you grow mature and excel? How do you bear fruit? You should be someone who is able to pray. You should be someone who is able. You are, you, you, gone are the days when you are told when to fast, guys. Gone are the days when you are told what time does church start. Call out the days when you are told what to do because you are responsible enough. All right. Mm -hmm. Some of you, we won't be even shocked to hear you are getting married because you are mature enough. So we can't yeah. train you today how to pray. <laughs> Yet you have this boldness to date a girl. Mm. <laughs> how come? <laughs> These things must balance. Oh, amen. How will you be a responsible father? If you are failing to pray for yourself, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> you should be mature enough to pray. You should be mature enough to build a relationship. With that and that we had was very interesting. But one thing that I want to explain here, we serve a God who speaks. Yeah. Prayer is the communication with God. I communicate with God. He communicates with me. Prayer is not like going hours and hours and hours. Just, it's not proper. When we sit down with mama, I, I speak for two hours without any break. Mama is just like, you, 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 at first she'll go like, Ten minutes, squint. Hit one hour. One hour, can you see Mama going like? She's not enjoying it. Prayer is communication between two. So as we build a relationship with God, we should just talk to God. He should respond to us. Yeah, right. We serve a God who speaks. Yeah. Have you ever had an encounter with God? Hearing God is speaking in your life. This is the right time. Remember the days of your youth. Before it's too late, a time is coming when it will be no longer be possible. Have you ever heard God is speaking in your life? Or you just always dream of those girls? They are very beautiful, <laughs> nice palms. Oh, they are light in complexion, very tall, oh, smart, so educated. Oh, that one graduated last time. Now what can I do? Oh, so that one is good. You, these are just the dreams. These are... Mm. <laughs> you need to build a relationship with God. Before you ask God, is this my right partner? You should ask God, am I living a good life? Everyone here will always say, I want a good partner. Oh, Johnny Sissi, oh, Johnny Mukoma, are you a good partner? Amen. Yeah. Amen. No, ask us, ask Amen. us, ask us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want a good partner. I want a good partner. How good are you? <laughs> You're even not faithful at church. I want a good partner. I want a submissive wife. You can't even submit at home. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> The qualities that you want from a partner, you should be someone who has already succeeded in those qualities. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, the Bible says, Flee from youthful passions, pursue righteousness, pursue love, peace, and faith. Right. Show me your friend, 
and I will, sh I will tell you your character. Show me your friend. I will tell your character. Hallelujah. You know, the, the word of God says in the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, catch us the little foxes that spoils the vineyard. The vineyard is tender grapes. Catch us the little foxes. You know what this statement is saying? There are certain behaviors, there are certain traits, there are so much hidden in you that the pastor can't even explain what type of a child is this because they are so hidden. The little foxes, they spoil the vineyard. The owner of the plantation is not even aware of the little foxes because the plantation is, is, is the, the plants, they are close to each other. It's like a bush. Then these little foxes, they go like they are under these fig trees, the vineyard. So they go like shaking all those plants. Catches the little foxes, they spoil the vineyard. It is tender grapes. So your character, your attitude, it drops down every opportunity. It drops down every opportunity. Every promotion is brought down because of your behavior, because of your character. Catch us the little foxes. You, you, you have, a, a, like you live in anger. You live in moods. You know, you, you, people always say, handle with care this one. You are like an, a, a, a raw egg. If you don't handle it properly, it breaks. Catch us the little foxes. You have, you, you have a certain behavior. Your mother always complains of this behavior. Your friends, they complain of this behavior. Your aunt, your dad complains of this behavior. But you are looking for a good man. You are looking for a good woman. Catch us, the little foxes. They will spoil your marriage. Come on, Lord. If you don't deal with your character today, your character will deal with you in your marriage. Baba. Deal with your character. Before it deals with you, yeah. it, your character. It will destroy your marriage. Deal with your character. Deal with your character. You don't want to, to wash dishes. You don't want even, you know, boys. Hallelujah, boys. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, boys. No, boys, yeah. I, I, I can't say it's nature. Because some, they don't do that. They love to put on socks maybe for three days without washing. Who told you that? Even fans inside their briefs, uh, they will go some days to you. Catch us the little foxes. <laughs> Even that dish, there are some boys who laugh. Yeah. Even those dishes. <laughs> you meet, uh, uh, you see someone at church today in a green t shirt. Then tomorrow is month. Today is Saturday, of course. That Sunday when we are at church in a green t shirt. You meet them in town, man, in a green t shirt. <laughs> So then you meet them in a green t shirt. Not because there is no, what do you call it, safe at home, mm. washing powder. No, not because there is no soap at home. No, but because they are just delays. They are just delays to know. I, I don't want to yip these clothes because it will be, it, it will be something, a job to do nonsense. So I, I, it's rather better I go three days with one trout. I go three days with one soft hair. I go three days with one shell. Excuse me. Catch up the little foxes before they destroy your marriage. When we like it, I was going to hear that. Everyone, remove your shirt, remove your jacket, and we try to see the armpits. Come on, catch us the little foxes. Oh, everything here. Catch us the little foxes before they spoil your vineyard. Heaven, to brush your teeth. Do you know we will judge? Do you need a minimum of five minutes to brush your teeth. No, it's not easy to tell my, my, my daughter here that your mouth is stinky. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not easy. But the people always bypass you. People always went for sick. What's happening? See, there's a certain smell. Not so far, no engine oil. You magic. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you love, you know, you, you love to argue everyone. Ah, please, you are smiling. 
Hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah. Okay, just the little foxes. Before they spoil the vineyard, the vineyard is tender grapes. Yeah. You know, the farmer is looking for a great harvest. Yeah. We are even looking forward for the advancement of faith in God's ministries. Yeah. You are the one to advance the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. Don't let us down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Boys, are we there? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, okay, I will come there. <laughs> Flee from youthful passions. Pursue righteousness. Pursue righteousness, pursue faith, pursue love. Show me your friend, I will show you, I will tell you your character. You know, I, I will always repeat myself. Life is all about choice. You know when your mother says, that friend of yours is not good. Don't think she or he doesn't love you. Rather listen and do like you are told. When even your brother, your sibling, or even your pastor at church, maybe you have come with your girlfriend at your uh, at your church, or you have gone for mentorship at your pastor, and you tell him, Baba, I'm thinking of proposing sister so and so. And Baba says, mm, son, okay, just hold on. And you feel like, Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one is still blinded. <laughs> uh, let me just pursue and go. You know, we have got testimonies and testimonies. Mm -hmm. Now we can't mention even any name. But there are some who are told, this relationship will not go anywhere. <laughs> Their heads grew like this. <laughs> and they said, what can you teach us? Trying to teach us how to love a partner. Mm, yeah, backward. And they proceeded. But when the devil is now in that marriage, like what Apostle was saying, God has divorce. Who we'll just come and pray, Father, you have mess upon this marriage. Some of these things will not change until you die. That's right. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's right. Apostles, you just hear. Kushi shona wa noti. Ma pere aka wanda mchech wa indo shoma. The wolves are so many. That's why we, the, the Bible records the road to eternity is very narrow. But the road to everlasting torment is as wide as I don't know. This space seems to be even smaller. That road to eternity, eternal torment. So the wolves... You will see them by their footprints. The sheep, we will see them by their footprints. So when you are in a wrong marriage, never ever think Archbishop will come and say to us. Never, never, never. Because there's a perfect, perfect will, perfect marriage, and a permissive will. A permissive will. You know, the, by the grace of God, you will enjoy by the grace, by the grace. You know, God is kind, long suffering. Mm. By God is grace. Uh, but the perfect will, you just cross. Life is good. God says it's not good that men should be alone. I will make him a suitable helper, a suitable helper. You will never regret marrying. You will never, never, never. You are always celebrating. This is good. This is good. Life is full of choices. You decide. You choose. The Holy Spirit will not put pressure on you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Make a rightful decision. Make a rightful choice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 7b. We are talking of how do you grow? How do you mature? Choose right friends. Amen. Amen. Choose right friends. Develop a closer relationship with your God. Hallelujah. James chapter 4 verse 7, he says, Resist the devil, he will flee away from you. Ah. Resist, it means the devil is ready to come 24 7. Resist, resist, resist. The Bible is not saying no devil will come. Uh -uh. Resist the devil, he will flee. If you entertain the devil, you are in what soup? Hmm. 
You should learn to resist. If it's not yet time for you to be in a relationship, resist the devil. Tell them at once, I don't want. Ah, you know, there are these type of girls. Oh, no. Ah, no, no, no. You, you can't even tell. Is she interested? <laughs> Is she not? What's happened? She can't say no. Oh, what? Oh, man. Come on, God. What are you telling us? Resist the devil. Say no. Be someone who has standards in life. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I was telling those girls when we were that side. Mm. People who give you names because of your attitude and behavior. At college, I was, I was given a name. Jesus' sister. Here comes Jesus' sister. And so the yes, yes, and so the I punch and you must eat. I will not retreat. But if you find there's no heaven when you arrive, and I'll say, oh, okay, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> People will give you names. <laughs> Volunteers, they comes and I've no boyfriend, I've no flowers, I've no phone. I'm even doing my assignment. Oh, come on, this one. This Christianity, you, you, this is too much. You are going to the extremes. I don't believe this thing. No, this one. People will give you names. But get, stand your ground. Resist the devil. Yeah. You know, at one moment, <gasps> ish, I, uh, I, I'm a qualified hairdresser. So at one moment, we were still youth. And I loved God. You know, all the clients were even away. This, this sister, I remember when we finished the apprenticeship, all these other girls and those um, young mothers, they were told, there's no work here, no place to accommodate you. Only that one, one, one sister, Sister Mavis, she works very hard. Please, this one will remain here. Give her clients, give her customers. People were jealous at work because of my faithfulness, because of my hard work. And guess what? One of the hairdressers and her customer, they had to organize a big secure who works at Reserve Bank. He was fully grown, but he hasn't been married. Come, there's a faithful child at our salon. Mavis is here now. And then, uh, something was organized, Mama. We were at a youth conference. And when I came back at work, man, this church program. And I said, what did I miss? And say, hey, handsome man from reserving. He got him. No, no. My husband will come from the Lord. You need to have that boldness. Even if you don't know when am I going to be married, you need to be very bold. Someone who fears the Lord, the Lord will give me in the fullness of time. What made that secure grow to that level, Mama, without a wife? Don't be deceived by the enemy. People who come to you and try to deceive you, stand your ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. I'm saying resist the devil. Two cannot walk together unless in agreement. Don't tell me she's just following me. You like it. No, I, I... Don't tell me. I'm always seeing him at our house. You love it. <laughs> you can't entertain the devil. Two yeah. cannot walk together unless in agreement. <laughs> this is reality. <laughs> Don't tell me she just follows me. I own bed. Make a choice. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. This one. Where can I stand? I'm sure here. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness and unrighteousness? What communion has darkness and light? Another singer, but singer, singer, give Hallelujah. What fellowship is darkness and light? You will hear someone say, I will convince him. I, 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 I will preach my Jesus to him when we are now married. That's a lie from hell. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can't be an equal yogi with a non believer. Don't be bold. Did you do such abnormal things? It's sin. The Holy Spirit actually departed from you way back. Huh? It's Ichabod. The glory departed because how? How? Where are you getting this boldness to go along with a non believer? 
And when you are praying, what type of prayers are you giving to God? Thank you, Lord, for this the handsome man. Thank you, Lord. We now pray for money for Lobola. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, I a God who answers prayers. You are lying. You should know what the word of God says. You know, there are some girls who have purpose within themselves. I don't care I, I, as much as I love. Huh? That's a natural instinct. That's a natural feeling that if you can stay with any, someone of an opposite sex, you develop feelings. That's natural. That's not God. No. I just feel it within myself. Everyone feels that. Okay. With no Holy Ghost. Even the heathens, they feel it. It's natural. But a husband comes from the Lord. A wife comes from the Lord. You need to pray because marriage is a commitment for life. You need to open your eyes and see 10, 20, 30 years later, will you be able to be worshiping God as you are worshiping God? Will you survive? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Live by your standards. You will only become better in life when you choose to change everything you are doing and you start to do everything with an excellent spirit and in line with the word of God. Faithfully serve in the house of God. Your promotion will come. You know, David used to go into the bush to look after his father's sheep. God saw the hard work of David and his skill and his leadership whilst he was in the bush. You know, the day he came when Goliath was a problem and David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Back in the forest, a lion came. I killed it. A bear came. I killed it. You have to save God faithfully. Your promotion will locate you while you are at work. Hallelujah. You know, Ruth was busy in that field. Hallelujah. And everyone, everyone was seeing that she, she, she has been in the field gleaning. She has been in the field. And even the master is to ask, who is that one? Where has she come from? Call her. It was because of hard work and faithfulness. But you are idle. You are seated. You don't want to sing. You don't want to usher. You don't want to host. You don't want to sweep the church. You don't want even to be a floor manager. Just to monitor even anything. You, you, you don't want. You just want to sit. You know, it's not easy for me to communicate with people, you know. I, I find it very difficult. So... I rather choose to see it. You know, communication to me is a challenge. No, it's not a challenge. You have got so much pride in you. Mm. You made it to usher you to do anything. Let this mind that was in Jesus be in you. Even though he was God, out of humility and obedience, he humbled himself and died for you and me. He was promoted to be given a name that is above every name. What is it that you want? All your answers are at church. Opportunities will locate you whilst you are working. How can we promote you? This Sunday, you are at church. Next Sunday, you don't even tell us where you are going. The following Sunday, you are in Pretoria. Next Sunday, PGC. It, two months later, we she's in Zimbabwe. Ah, a month later, she's in Botswana. Back in Pretoria. Hallelujah. You need to be very stable. Safe under one pastor. Don't jump into assemblies. You won't grow. They, I don't know here. But in Zimbabwe, there are some people who do that. This week is here. Next week she's there. The following week she's looking for marriage. You will never find marriage. Marriage will look at you whilst you are busy, 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 busy with your eyes even closed. You are concentrating. You are concentrating. Then people who go through your pastor. I want that one. You are even busy. You are even busy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't move from church to church. 
And if some will go on even to an extreme of saying, the pastor, is, you know, is a, a bit weak. Akapora. Aruchaka no pisa. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anemotu. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> no condition is permanent. No season has come to stay. Hallelujah. You might be there today. We are talking of a quest for maturity. And you are trying to relate my message with your lifestyle. How can this be? How can this be? I, I just want to encourage you. Nothing is impossible before God. We serve a God of the impossibilities. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. I never thought ever in my life I would get married and have a wedding. You know, I always laugh with my mother at home. I, I stay with my mother. At one time, I, I, I said, Mama, do you remember my first day in town in Harad? I didn't know even what tap water is like. So I was trying to wonder, this bicycle which brings in water, what's happening? Who is pushing this bicycle? It was like strange. Then I went into this flushing system toilet. Then my sister told me, after you've done your business, drop down this, uh, this, this corner, everything will just go. And I said, it's okay. I did my business, I'm done. And I go like, you know, in Glenview, those little chambers like, uh, well, mama, those round sphere to work. The water will go like, Pah! I ran like someone. <laughs> Yeah, my sister said, You are embarrassing us. You have to get inside the house. You are embarrassing us here. God can lift anyone from any level. I was even laughing with Madeline's father, and I said, Do you remember the day you bought me ice cream? Uh, I'm telling you, reality. God can just tell everything around for your good. Yeah. I think I was somewhere like 16 years. I, I never ate ice cream. I didn't know it. I didn't even know this is something frozen. I didn't know. So he, brought, he bought an ice cream for me. Africa Unity Square Harari. Ah, then it was a cone. I didn't know this is something frozen. Then I bite, you know, from here. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Ah. I tried to put this whole part in my mouth and I feel all oh, this. I'm numb, you know, I'm like someone who is, who is suffering stroke. What's happening with my cheeks? And you know, I retreated back and I go like, <laughs> and this other thing, I just dropped it down. <laughs> I'm not telling this that you love. I'm just trying to say God is a God of that which you think is not possible. God can raise anyone. You know at that moment, if you were there to say, you are a pastor, you are a strategic minister, you are an international gold champion of Operation Nehemiah, was it going to relate with such a system? God can raise anyone. Faithfully serve God like you are made, as if there is no tomorrow. Mm. Serve God as if you are made. Don't be too expensive with mm. your service. Mm. For by grace we were saved. Hallelujah. Don't allow the church to suffer. Yet you have got a perfect, brilliant skill. Right. And the pastor will go and hire people to pay money. Yet you sit back, you relax, and you just monitor, you watch and you comment. By the way, he doesn't even perfect these things. Where are you? Hallelujah. Pray without ceasing. Keep on coming to church, yes. Hebrews 10, verse 25. The word of God says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some. You should keep on coming to church. Accountability is one of our core values. Don't just think of not going to church and you say, pastor will call me. Hmm. The advisor will look for me. They will call me and say, where are you? And are you a God? <laughs> Hallelujah. We honor and fear God. Accountability. Strong men. Love. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You should be accountable. You should be able to give back a report. When you are being sent to do a certain task, be able to give back a report. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm just rounding off. James chapter 4, verse 7. Three minutes left. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Let the pastor be free to give you duties every time. Don't push the pastor away because of your attitude. Don't always frown your face when the pastor is called you. And you go like, <laughs> I, I, I heard you were looking for me. <laughs> huh? Are you a son? Hallelujah. The pastor should feel so free to give you duties. Ask yourself something. Ask yourself this question. Have I never been given any task at church? If it, the answer is a no, deal with yourself. Why? Why are people so afraid to give you some tasks? Hallelujah. The pastor should be very free to give you duties, even to preach during Sunday service. Maybe something has happened, and the pastor will just say, Come, come, Josie. He can preach. And you say, you know, these pastors of today, they are not organized. Come this Sunday. He's telling me to preach. And you're even announcing it to the whole church that I was not even informed before. And as you stand here, you always say, Damboda kuramba. But ndasongo te gandi shinge. Saka wakuna wote tiji si. Be mature. You know, there are some people like that. When they are given an opportunity to preach, they always say, when mama called me, I said, mama, I can't. Why are you standing there? Sit down. What do you expect us to do? Be bold. Be confident. Come on. Is not around. Come on. The word of God in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the, the anointing of God to take over. Mama, we need you, Ripo. Don't feel pretty yeah. before the people of God. And in a machine, no, Tainga. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, people will say, I, I don't have much. That's why we are here. Give us yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> the pastor should always rely on you. Allow your mind to be transformed. The last scripture is Colossians chapter 3 from verse 5 to 10. It, it, uh, where, we, where it says self must die. You know, it talks of the things that we used to do when we were, when we were still non-Christians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Hallelujah. This is the last scripture. Then I close. Yes, Colossians chapter 3. I'll read from verse 5 down to 10. Therefore put to death your members, which are on earth, fornication and cleanliness, passion desires, Passions, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. There are certain things that you yourselves once lived in them before you were not saved. 